In this video, guys, it's time to try and fix these rads. Pretty bent. So what I like to do first when we're dealing with the radiators is obviously this radiator is bent in. Um, that's the easy fix. The harder fix is when you look down it and if there's any twist. This one's not too bad, but we're gonna put it in the vise. Uh, if you have a set of soft jaws or aluminum jaws, but since I'm gonna be prying on it, I just wanna apply a little pressure, light with the vise, and then basically twisting it with my hands to get it straight. You can see we've got this rad pretty straight. Yeah, it's good. So what we've got guys is, is we've got a block of wood, like a two by six, what I had laying around. And what I want to do is to prop this up against it because we need to get this flat again back down there. And you can see the, the bend and the twist, especially when you put it on the wood. So we're gonna use this other two by six. The two by four is fine too. I don't have a long enough piece here. And we're just gonna drive it with the dead blow and work that aluminum guard out. Couple hits, take a look. Still needs more. It's coming along, you can already see the improvement. These rads didn't leak, so hopefully we don't damage them. But they're no good bent like that. Coming along, a lot straighter already. We're just gonna keep working it until we get the, uh, the effect we want. Go to this side, you see it's up a bit. Just gonna rest the wood on that edge. So just because the bike had a little bend in the rad doesn't mean you need to buy new rads. These rads are actually in pretty good shape considering the bike is over 20 years old. And uh, yeah, they came right back out. So our next step is getting the hoses installed back on the bike. There's quite a few of them when it comes to the coolant system. When we get that on the top of the head, get the clamp down. Now we're not gonna tighten the clamps until we get everything situated. Get our rad installed. Hose has gotta slip through in there. <clears throat> So we're gonna set up the RC valve. And I've actually done a video on this before, and I think it's pretty good rather than trying to refilm the whole thing. It's pretty simple. It kind of needs its own video. I'm gonna set it up quick on this install, but I'm gonna leave a link um, up here, wherever it pops up, I'm not sure. And uh, so if you guys wanna see the RC valve video, click the link. So we're just installing the exhaust manifold. There's a gasket that goes on in behind. One thing to note guys, every time I do one of these bikes, they're always missing the exhaust gasket. There's a rubber gasket that has to go on there. It's not just a normal O-ring. You have to buy it from Honda. I'll see if I can show you guys. My hands are filthy, don't mind that. But you see the gasket has a taper to it, like a, like it kind of has a high spot. So that needs to go on there. Okay. They're not a lot of money, but <laughs> night and day difference on your bike. Install our pipe. Use our spring puller tool. Kind of a must have tool if you're working on dirt bikes, guys. Hard to do and not block the camera. Can 
install the fuel tank in the bike. I ended up getting a brand new strap for this bike because it was missing. So close. There we go. So what we're going to do now, guys, install the fuel line. We're not going to use the old fuel line. We're going to uh, basically copy the, the bend with this new clear fuel line. Cut it to its size. This is from the same people who I got the, the hose from. They sell all sorts of hose, this Max Flow uh, Motorsports. So great company, guys. If you're looking for hose, use them. It's a little chilly in my garage tonight. The weather's been changing. Winter's coming, it's inevitable. Uh, the hose is just a little bit hard to get on. If um, you're having the same problem, guys, you could use a heat gun and put a little bit of heat on it and it would cause it to swell. Uh, but if you don't need to, then don't. But if you do, don't be afraid to use what you have available. Don't, don't struggle. Um, I'm so close to getting it on. You guys are watching me struggle, but uh, if I was really having problems, I would definitely get the heat gun out. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> Perfect. Got a nice flow right into the carb. All right. So we're going to grease up this air filter. I like to usually pour some stuff in a bag and do it that way, but we're going to do it over top of the garbage can today. Uh, I've used the Ziploc bag before and kind of saved some oil. We got a brand new twin air filter for the bike. So we're going to uh, use the Maximus stuff. I really like this filter oil. It, it really seems to work good. And uh, if you got something that's working, why would you change it? So we just, uh, you're going to spill some, it's going to go all over. So do it either outside on the gravel or over a garbage can. And you're just gonna work that oil into the filter. This stuff is sticky, guys. That's why I'm wearing the gloves. We're not trying to wring it out so much because we don't want to tear the filter. We just want to squeeze it in, squeezing it. Squeezing it as we go around until it's a nice, uh, nice color, kind of equal everywhere. I'm sure, you check the inside. You don't have great big wet spots, and just working it around. Looks good to me. Now we'll install the filter onto the cage. There's a, I'll show you guys. When you're installing it on the cage, you want to get, kind of has the shape, right? You're going to look at it. You're going to see it. Um, you push the, the, the center here over top of the cage. So it's actually over top of, I don't know if you can see it real good, over top of the little black thing in there. It pushes into it, and then you want to line up the hole with the uh, with the part of the filter here. Now I don't want to touch too much stuff, so I'm not going to shut the camera off. I'll have to do it after. Go up a hair here. Take our safety bar out. Lower our left. Don't hit nothing. And it's just a matter of installing it into the bike. It's nice and easy right now to show you guys and shoot it with the uh, rear fender and everything out of the way. You'll feel when you get it in the right spot. It'll kind of lock in.
You just tighten down your wing nut. Brand new. The Tusk Breakaway Clutch Lever, garbage. It does not fit the Tusk perch. It doesn't fit anybody's perch. It's too thick. All right. Rocky Mountain, if you're watching, pay attention. Okay, we got a brand new Tusk lever, right? It's the fold away one, right? They're not free. I had to pay for it. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys against the background here a little better. So it's too thick. This part here, it's, it's almost, it's gotta be three eighths or better but the groove is only a quarter inch. They don't fit. They don't fit the stock one. You order it for your bike, but they don't fit. I, I'm getting really tired of these companies charging premium dollars for crappy parts. It's, it's upsetting. Anyway, Rocky Mountain, I'll send you an email and a link to the video and asking you guys to do better because this is, uh, it's not acceptable. I've ordered from Rocky Mountain three times. All three times I've had nothing but problems. Their, their shipping's fast and the parts that do work, work really good. They carry a lot of parts, but the ones that don't, they just don't work. They're just, they're just no good. So anyway, because I'm not just gonna complain and get the same part what we've resorted to is hand filing the aluminum lever to fit the perch. Uh, we shouldn't have to, but we do have to every time. Anyway, so if you order them guys, if there's something I'm missing, let me know. But you know, it, it should fit. I don't know why it doesn't fit. Why are they building them three eighths when they should be quarter inch? I don't know, I've ground it, and now we're gonna hand file it up. So bear with me. Now we're gonna mount all of our controls, and clutch levers and things like that. We're not mounting these permanently yet until we feel them uh, from being on the bike. We're just gonna snug them up so we can work with them. Just barely, like if you spun it, you could scratch your bars, but uh, it's on there. We'll take our new lubed up cable and route it into the bottom of the lever. Oh, come here, little adjuster. Slide it in where it needs to be. Take the adjuster out a little bit. Well, more adjustment in the cable there obviously and that's what we're gonna have to work with. I'll pull our cover back off and our, our throttle's loose still. But it's pretty good there. It feels nothing's really holding it up. Lots of snap back. I'm trying. We may have to adjust it a little bit when the bike is running to see if it's set too high. Uh, if it's gonna cause the bike not to idle properly but we'll see when we get there but so far so good we're gonna go ahead and adjust we're gonna adjust the master cylinder uh, about where we want it so I know how I like the master cylinder and I like it or the front brake because I like it in quite far so that it's not in the way I can reach out and it puts my hand into the proper position. So I'm gonna give it a rough idea of where I think it should be. And then when we get the bike all back together, we may have to do some minor adjustments. Hmm. There, we're getting some brake on her now. We've got the kickstart in the vise, not very hard just firm enough to hold it. And then we're gonna put our impact driver in, turn to loosen, give her a hit. Now she's in there, this one. 
There we go. Perfect. Take the screw out. Ooh. Yeah, I can imagine what it's going to look like in there. That screw is, that doesn't look like grease to me. Not anymore. Now there is a little ball bearing in here. We don't want to lose it. Where is it? Right there. We don't want to lose that little ball bearing. Get one of my old Tupperware dishes so we can put the parts in. There's a little ball bearing, like I said, and there's a spring behind it. It's not falling out, so when we clean it, it'll hopefully come out. And uh, then we basically clean this really good and repack it with grease. So we've got the kickstart all cleaned up. All the components are clean. Um, and it's back in the vise just for to make it easier for me to film it. So I've got my grease, just the Maximus waterproof grease. It's, uh, it's a pretty good grease. And a small jar like this will last a normal person forever. Uh, I'm a pretty excessive with my grease. And since I do a lot of bikes, I don't know, I've used half a jar in a year and a half. So what we're doing is packing this area full of grease. And I mean full. <clears throat> I'm gonna sell this bike. Let's face it, the next guy's not gonna grease it. He's not gonna take it apart every year and do it. It's just inevitable. And then when it comes to our little piece here, this gloves I bought, they're pretty crappy. My black ones I had before were better. Uh, putting a little grease in the hole. Then the spring goes down in there. You guys can see that, hopefully. The spring drops down in that little hole. Then I like to have a little bit more grease on top of the spring so that it'll hold the ball bearing. Pack it all in, yeah, nice and good. Then there's uh, the seal that has to go down in here. What did I do with it? Right there it is. So that seal, just like all the other seals, it's got a little ring down in there. We want to put the, the, the ring side, the side, one side's solid, the other side's got a little slit. That slit needs to go down into the thing there. And our kickstart goes in. Grease coming out everywhere. It's pretty normal. Putting it in the right way. Nope. Just like that. It's got to go down in. Pushes in. Grease comes out everywhere. That's fine. That makes me know I got enough in there. Get rid of this stupid glove. We're going to take our screw and simply reinstall it. Tighten up, and then just snug. We'll come over here, install the Kickstarter. And I don't know if you guys remember, we had to order a brand new bolt from Honda because the guy had the wrong bolt. There's no washer. It's a bolt with a big collar on it. Special bolt. If yours doesn't have it, it's like three bucks. Buy another one. Now we got the rads all mounted and all the hoses hooked up as well. I like to top up the coolant system, get it taken care of and out of the way so we don't forget. Now we always check, but we also want to see if there's any leaks. We fix the water pump and see if anything starts leaking here. I don't know if you guys know this, but there is a proper way to pour out of a jug. And it's not like that, because it'll gurgle and jug. It's actually like this, so that you can let the air come in and you don't spill out. Just uh, in case you guys didn't know kind of thing. We got a pile done in this video. The rads are on, they're all straight. 
I'd love to know if you guys have any better ways to straighten rats. That's the way I do it, and it seems to work really good. Quick, you know, save some money. Uh, we got the fuel line ran, air filters on, pipe and silencer, all the controls, the breakaway levers. That was a lot of work to get this one adjusted. Uh, Rocky Mountain, I'm not really impressed with these uh, Tusk breakaway folding levers. They're not that good. Save your money, guys. Buy somebody else's product. Uh, they just, there's a lot of work that you need to put in to get them on your bike. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe in the video. Uh, leave a comment down below if, if you've had the same luck with these levers or have a better way to do the rads, like I said. But anyway, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Sneak peek video, guys. We bought a 1996 CR250. I've never owned one. I've always wanted one. And I don't think you would find a nicer one that is, this is a not, this bike isn't restored. This is original. Still has the original tires. We're going to do a whole video on it, but uh, I'd love for you guys to have a better look at this bike. I don't think you'll find a better one that's not in the crate. Anyway, guys, thanks again.